Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The aftermath of last month's fire at Grenfell Tower exposed social inequalities in the borough, in particular the kind of affordable housing offered to those on the lowest incomes. Most councils have a statutory duty to offer half of accommodation in all new large building projects as social housing. But BBC News has found that the council where Grenfell Tower is located, Kensington and Chelsea, agreed that developers could give them nearly £50 million instead of building the required social housing last year. And as Michael Buchanan reports, the council is far from alone in doing so. A rarely seen view of one of Britain's richest areas. But Kensington and Chelsea, like everywhere else, does have social housing. Just not enough of it. Kalpa Shukla is currently living in a local hostel, desperate for a home. I've tried to get a house for two years. It's just impossible, really, just to try and get any sort of housing. They're just... I've tried so many times and they just, just won't listen to you. They just say there's nothing for you and they just can't help me and they won't even get me on the housing list. Just minutes away, a huge new development in Knightsbridge that Kalpesh will never live in. There'll be shops, offices and luxury flats. Given the size of the build, council rules say half the homes should be affordable. But the architects say the flats were too big, the service charge would be too expensive. So Kensington and Chelsea Council allowed the developers to pay them £12 million, which they should now spend on affordable homes. Research for the BBC shows that in 2016, Kensington and Chelsea agreed to take nearly £47.5 million from developers in such deals. Of the money property companies have already paid them, more than £9 million remains unspent. However, just 336 affordable homes were built in the area over five years. In one year, just four were actually added. We're exporting the poor population. We've got the leader of the Labour group of the council is appalled. One of the great things about living in London is that you do have a balanced population and I do think we have a duty not to produce the prettiest ghost town in, in Western Europe, we need our first loyalty should be to maintaining and strengthening our communities, and we've fallen down on that job terribly. Kensington and Chelsea told us they're struggling to provide affordable homes due to being a small, densely packed area with limited sites and high land values. They say they do what they can, sometimes pushing developers to give more, but ultimately they say they have limited capacity to provide housing. Average house prices around here are more than £1 million. Despite that, the council has a target of building 200 affordable homes each year. Developers, however, seem increasingly keen to ignore such goals. Kensington and Chelsea uh, is an inner borough and also it has some uh, relatively high land values. Therefore, there's more likelihood of developers wanting to build entirely private schemes and give the payment to the council in lieu of affordable housing coming through as part of the new build application. Lots of English councils take money from developers instead of forcing them to build affordable homes. But in Kensington and Chelsea, many luxury flats lie empty. It's the only London borough with a falling population. Striking such deals can make sense, but only if the money is then properly used. Michael Buchanan, BBC News, West London.